Okay, uh, this lesson is going to focus on kites and trapezoids. These are specific types of quadrilaterals, that is four-sided figures. And what we'll first do is we'll first focus on kites. A kite is, I guess you could say it's kind of kite-shaped. It's convex in that uh, all the uh, angles point outward. The key characteristics for these is that they have consecutive congruent sides. So, like, if you have one side, it, its uh, other side that's going to be matching with it is going to be right next to it. So together they'll form an angle. Same thing uh, with the other pair. So they're not going to be opposite one another. They will make an angle like this. You won't get a situation where one's here and then the other's here. Another thing about kites is that they do not have parallel sides. Now there are other characteristics that you can also use to help identify a kite. This is a key one. You will have one pair of angles that are congruent to one another and those angles are going to be opposite one another. Now the way to tell is like this. Say we draw in a diagonal like this. Now you'll notice this separates this into two triangles. Now a quick question for you. <clears throat> are these two triangles congruent? In other words, does this triangle here on the left uh, have the same uh, side lengths and angle measures as the one on the right? Well, it definitely doesn't look like it. Now what if we draw the diagonal going the other way? Here you can, you can see both triangles are congruent. We know this because of side, side, and then side again. So SSS tells us two congruent triangles. And from forever ago, we know that if you have two congruent triangles, then all their corresponding parts match. That means, in this case, the opposite angles being congruent. It also means that this angle here is congruent to this angle here. And we also know that this angle here is congruent to this angle here. Because of that, in drawing this diagonal, we also get an angle bisector. The other property is that those diagonals are perpendicular. They do form a right angle in the middle. Now, if you ever see two diagonals drawn in, the right angle isn't going to be made for you. So it's going to be up to you to figure out that, hey, I should write 90 in the middle for all four angles. And you can do that by writing 90 or just putting a little box symbol like we have here. Again, note the congruent triangles. It's not just that this whole top one is congruent to the whole bottom. You should also see that this triangle is congruent to the one underneath. Same thing for the larger one here. This one is congruent to this one. Let's do an example. Let's say you were to solve for x on this one. If you draw a diagonal like this, does that cut this into two congruent triangles? Well, we can already tell that's not the case because this angle, 90 degrees, does not equal this angle, 40 degrees. However, what if we draw the diagonal the other way? Here, it's a little more obvious. You can see that we have side, side, side. So two congruent triangles, and what that tells you is that this angle x is also the same as this angle. Okay, it's important that whenever you do kite problems with angles that you assign a value to every single angle. We had one for the 40 degrees, here for this angle x, here for the 90, and now we also have this angle assigned. Remember with kites there's always one pair of angles that are congruent. The angles of any quadrilateral will add up to 360 degrees. So what you'll want to do is you'll want to write a statement in which you total all four angles. So we do that here and then set equal to 360 degrees. Just basic algebra after that. Collect your like terms. 2x plus 130. Then minus the 130 and divide by 2. And that's how you do that. These kind of problems are pretty common when it comes to kites. So again just be aware one pair of opposite angles are congruent. Okay, let's try another, but this time involving the diagonals already drawn in. Determine x and y. 
One of the first things you should notice immediately is that, again, those diagonals are going to be perpendicular, which means you're going to have 90 degree angles right there in the center. Now, one of the first things you should notice is immediately the 55 degrees is equal to y. Here's the reason. Let's outline this triangle here. This is one of the nice things about kites. We get a nice symmetry. You will notice that right here, these two sides are congruent. What that means is that since it is an isosceles triangle, this side here over on the right is the base. And the base angles are equal to each other because you'll notice that those angles are opposite those two sides. That's why they're congruent. And you get that dynamic in all kites. You can make the same judgment here with this angle here equaling to this angle here because they are opposite congruent sides of a triangle on the right hand side. Okay, now let's try and focus just on one of these triangles. If you just look in that triangle right there, let's kind of vanish the rest of this here. We already have two out of three angles. And recall that in a triangle, the angles add up to 180 degrees. So just go ahead and write this and then solve it. And there you have your answer for x. All right. Let's go ahead and move on to trapezoids. Trapezoids, you'll recall, are four-sided figures that have exactly one pair of parallel sides. Now, as far as we're concerned, those parallel sides are going to be called bases. So every trapezoid has two bases. And here, we're seeing it on the top and on the bottom. The other two sides are referred to as legs and every trapezoid has two legs to stand on if you get the idea. The main thing about trapezoids is this. Whenever you have uh, a pair of parallel sides, you're always going to have two pairs of angles that form a C shape. And two of the three sides of the C shape are going to be the parallel sides. What that does is that tells us that this angle here and this angle here total 180 degrees. And you'll always want to look for that when it comes to trapezoids. So again, let me emphasize. Two angles on the same side that form a C shape total 180 degrees. Those are same side interior angles. You should also see that dynamic here and here. So again, you got two pairs. And they're always between the parallels here and here, not between the legs, here and here. Now there is such a thing as an isosceles trapezoid in that the two legs are the ones that are congruent. We wouldn't talk about the bases in this case. It is possible for a leg to be the same length as a base, but that doesn't necessarily make it isosceles. So the dynamic for an isosceles trapezoid gives us some other properties. First of all, and this is a big one, the base angles are going to be congruent. Now consider what the base angles are. Base angles are angles that are connected <laughs> by the base. So if you're talking about this base, for example, then we mean this angle here and this angle here. So they'll both have the same measurement. If, on the other hand, you're talking about the base up top, that's this one, then you're talking about this angle here and this angle here. So what you have are two pairs of congruent angles. Again, this is a big one. This comes up a whole lot. Another property that comes up involves the diagonals. The diagonals are congruent to one another. This idea doesn't come up as often, but still it's significant. And for, uh, I got to tell you, this kind of thing comes up in, in more advanced problems. So again, if these two legs are the same length, 
these two diagonals are the same length. So there it is in a nutshell. Your base angles are equal, your diagonals are equal. Okay, let's do an example. Determine x and y. One of the first things you should notice is that these two legs are congruent. Because of that, the base angles are congruent. So first think about which sides are the base. This is a base. And because of that, the base connects these two angles, and those two angles are congruent to one another. Therefore, 3x is equal to 66. And if you solve that little equation, you get 22 for an answer. Also keep in mind that this top side is a base. And you'll notice that it connects this angle to this angle. Therefore, not only is this angle y, but also this angle as well is y. Now let's go back to the very first thing we talked about with trapezoids. Since these two sides are parallel, if you connect here, what you get is a C shape, only upside down. The angles created by that C shape, in this case, the Y and the 66, are same side interior angles, or consecutive interior angles, meaning that they add up to 180 degrees. Therefore, if you subtract 66 from 180, you wind up with 114. So that is your solution. Now we have our answers to both x and y. OK, let's do one last one involving the diagonals this time. Here you are told that the length of ln, that's this one, is 5x plus 13. And the length of mp, that's this one, is equal to 12x minus 1. Again, recall that since this trapezoid is isosceles, and we know this because the legs here are congruent, and those are legs because they're not parallel to one another, we know that the diagonals are going to be the same length as well. Therefore, ln is equal to mp. And since we know the lengths of ln and mp, let's go ahead and write those in and set them equal to one another. From here, you would just simply solve. You would minus from both sides, and you'd wind up with an answer of 2. And that is it. That's it for this one. I'll see you next time.